through there. This will get eight times. Eight times the zoom. Here comes the goat. Let's go track him. We acquired this part of the ranch like um, I think it's like three years ago and um, I didn't really start shooting here until last year. There's a delay with the association. There it is. It's a nice size. Oh, it's a nice one. one is a male it shot we're supposed to right there oh, thank you very much thank you the other one's still there oh crap man well, that there you go. Um, we dispatched um, two of the Audads. Um, population is very healthy. Um, when I came here, there's at least 18 in that um, one flock. And um, this morning, these two males came, um, came out with, um, with a small one. So um, we're going to go home and um, make a video how to clean them, process them maybe. But let me um, get you closer to it. There they are. Yep, not bad. Well, we'll load them. All right, at this time, um, we are at the um, cleaning station at base camp at the ranch. Um, we put um, a narration on this video because um, during the time of the filming, um, I, didn't, I did not have any um, dead cat for my microphone and um, the sound quality was horrible, especially with the wind. But anyways, um, this is an Odad, um, also called Barbarian Sheep. 
Um, a lot of people debate if um, this is a goat or is it a sheep? And um, the answer is, I don't know. Um, I only know that um, according to the readings that I did on this um, animal, it's a native of um, North Africa. Um, they are already rare in North Africa, but um, they were introduced here um, in North America a um, long time ago, and um, the population is very healthy. Um, now the first thing that you want to do um, when you're um, before you're skinning your um, before you skin your carcass is um, you want to rinse. You want to rinse it, um, of course, to take out dirt and um, fleas and ticks also to jump better when the um, carcass is dry and making it making it wet. Um, it's make it makes it harder for them to jump on you. You know, so. Um, each time I skin an animal, um, I rinse it. Um, well, um, water is available here, so I can do it. But if if you have to fill dress an animal, you know, then um, you don't have water, and not much you can do about it. Um, I'm a meat hunter. Um, I'm no trophy hunter, so um, I sh I hunt on um, feeders. Um, reduce adrenaline on the um, game animal um, that's why I don't track him and chase him and things like that as a matter of fact when they um, come to the um, feeder I wait for them to um, be comfortable you start eating and all of that before I even shoot him yeah you rinse the um, carcass well um, you want you want it you want it to be as clean as possible and like what I said if um, water is available in our case um, we have um, good um, water pressure here because um, I put a pressure pump and um, a pressure tank. Oh, by the way, um, we dispatch both of them on the on my left side um, on the ground. You can see the um, second one right there. That's the um, smaller one. Um, the one we're trying to skin right now is the bigger one. Um, here at the ranch, we're part of the um, Texas 1D1 um, Wildlife Management Program. So um, we are not agricultural. Um, we are not commercial. This ranch is um, neither agricultural or um, commercial. And our goal here is to reduce the um, number of the um, non-native species, such as this thing, the ODAD. And of course, the um, wild hogs. Um, wild hogs they are growing in numbers and um, we're trying dearly to um, control their number and um, it seems like we're we're merely putting a dent on it if any dent at all anyways um, my style in skinning is I always wear my um, cutting gloves um, those gloves um, protect protect you from um, being cut by um, the knives and uh, this glove in particular um, it's actually armored with um, tiny bitty um, chain links like the um, armor I uh, like the um, chain link that the um, knights um, wear under their armor first thing you gotta do is um, cut the skin around the ankle and when you're doing that you gotta be careful not to cut the tendon you cut the tendon man try um, hanging that um, animal again and it's gonna be really really hard I've done that before too so um, just take your time be careful cut the skin around the ankle on both sides And like what I said, be careful not to cut the um, tendon. Very important. You need that. Um, you need that um, for your animal to um, stay up there. Now, um, behind the leg on the hairline, you also want to cut the skin through there. By the way, so I'm using a, a, a um, utility, I'm folding utility knife. Um, the reason why, because um, it's sharp and um, 
easier to clean um, if you buy a regular um, utility knife like the one that, that slides um, maybe it's not as easy to clean this one you just push the button replace the blade and clean it at the same time there you go right there from one side to the other right on the hairline now you're gonna work you're gonna work on the belly part you also cut the skin through the belly um, avoid its webbles um, this particular all that is a male so I'm cutting the skin and um, I'm going around the webo and the um, chorizo and for some reason if you cut it too deep and you um, cut through the um, stomach don't sweat it too much just rinse it uh, my mom was um, a butcher a long time ago um, she sells um, meat for a living and um, I see the butchers um, now and then the um, they cut through the stomach and they just rinse it and the, the meat is fine just rinse it well and when you cook it be, um, you're gonna rinse it again anyway so you wanna cut through the belly all the way down to the neck and um, you check make sure you didn't you don't miss a spot and that's it cut all the way down to the neck you want those um, meat on the neck um, for a deer they call it the Osco Bosco or something um, for me it's just yes, some curry um, I usually cook him with, with um, the instapot or um, pressure cooker to make him tender I'm not gonna lie to you those um, that need the uh, meat on the neck they're pretty tough but with pressure cooker or um, instapot boy you can just peel him off um, from the bones easily they're so tender it takes about 45 minutes depending on how old the um, animal um, we're adjusting the height right here Um, at this time we're gonna let go of the um, utility knife and we're gonna get the um, caping knife um, this one I'm using is um, a skinning knife set um, from Gerber I bought it in um, from Amazon and the, um, the knife set um, Gerber knife set that I bought um, comes with um, one um, caping knife and the other one is a gut hook knife yeah, two two pieces and you're gonna start right at the ankle yeah, take your time and do it properly in real life um, if you're not um, doing a video if you just skin this thing you can you can skin and quarter the whole animal in a, within 30 minutes you can just you know but um for the sake of um the um, video um we take our sweet time um doing it see that very carefully when you're cutting around the um, um ankle of your game animal do not cut the tendon whatever you do when you're skinning it you may cut it too whatever you do do not cut the tendon it's a pain in the butt to re um, rehang this um the carcass same thing when you're skinning um work your work your um, work your way around the webos and the chorizo Yes, be patient, especially when you're doing this for a um, second time. Um, I've skinned a lot of um, hogs before. I've skinned a lot of hogs and um, a few deer. But um, this is actually my um, second time um, skinning um, an old dad. And um, I timed the um, how much time it took to skin the first one before. Um, it's, it's a lot smaller than this that one it only took me like 20 minutes 
without rushing of course you just do it normally um, next time I'm gonna hunt this it's probably gonna be winter because um, it's a little too hot this is like the last week of July if I remember if I'm um, saying like the last week of July and I'm at the ranch it's um, very hot Rock Springs Texas some weather baby and sometimes out of the blue it just rain like hell okay um we changed the speed of the video right here because um we're just walking our knife through skinning this and um on this se um, segment right here um we're gonna pick up the um utility knife and um, cut the skin in the back too because um i found it hard to um to skin this animal maybe because it's older right there make it easier a little bit to skin do it like half at a time well we continue to um, skin the um, first half right here and um, this animal is a lot tougher to skin than I thought um, maybe because maybe because it's old like me <laughs> just work it out well now we're starting on the um, other half of the carcass um, we are now working the um, tail section which is um, I call the pain in the butt section and there's a reason for that <laughs> Um, but anyways, um, this animal is a lot tougher to skin than I thought. Um, I thought it would, it would skin like a deer, but it's not. The deer you can just, at this um, stage right here, the deer you can just like yank it and then take it out like a piece of sock. But, you know, you just have to be patient when you're um, skinning this um, so you won't lose a lot of meat. Make sure your knife is sharp. <coughs> Sharpen it once in a while. And, um, go back skinning while I'm skinning um, while I was skinning this I probably um, kind of sharpened my knife like two or three times not a lot um, Gearbirds are good good uh, product they make good knives so kind of just clean the edges actually not even really sharpening and there it is we're about 80% done We're going to work next on the um, torso and neck area. We are now back to um, normal speed on the video because um, this is the part where, where um, it's somewhat critical um, at this stage um, as you can see the um, most most of the neck is um, exposed um, the skin is um, removed and from most of it just fine-tuning from here and um, you want to remove the skin um, from the neck as far as close as possible to the skull and um, as you can see right here I've made a mistake of not um, cutting the back skin all the way um, to the base of the skull so it would have been split it would have been a lot easier um, lessons learned right there if I just ran my blade all the way um, to the base of the skull at the back of the um, animal it would have been split in half and it would be a lot easier instead of lifting it and keep on checking where's the base of the skull once again I got my um, utility knife right there and cut more in um, at the neck in the back you can do that too but um, it's like a folded skin so you can forget it it actually takes more work 
and um, the meat's gonna look ugly so um, what I did right here is use the um, utility knife and um, cut through the um, all the way to the um, throat of the um, animal and of course we continue to um, remove the skin from the neck at least on the other side it's um, already um, cut in half so it should be much much easier now as you can see right there it's a lot more manageable yeah we're there at the base of the skull now <laughs> I wonder what I was saying I could remember <laughs> But um, I'm a happy camper. I like skinning the um, animal. I actually enjoy um, skinning the um, game animal more than um, I'm shooting it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again. Um, I'm a meat hunter. No, I'm not a trophy hunter. And um, when I dispatch an animal, I see food before I see the trophy. Um, in my whole life, um, in my in my whole experience in hunting, I only dispatch like one eight pointer. Um, white tail. After that, um, I found that the uh, meat is not as um, good as um, the yearling or a doe. Uh, so since then, um, I don't hunt eight, hunt eight pointer anymore. There's we have a lot of eight pointer at the ranch. Um, I have videos of um, eight pointers like visiting the um, feeder, but I don't shoot them anymore unless it's um, unless I see something very 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 old like maybe a 10 pointer or 12 things like that I'll probably dispatch it but um I'll probably just give away the meat or a uh, make jerky out of it yeah they're not even they're not even good sausage I had that before too I mean it's not bad I'm not gonna I'm not gonna gag things like that I'll eat it but no yep I for I, I shot my first um eight pointer um 2016 if I if I if I believe and since then um, I never shot one I've been I've been dispatching a yearling every season I'm um, I dispatch um, probably one or two deer in the beginning I shot like um, four of them because they were way overpopulated and um, <laughs> the biologist in um, fish and game actually said I'm supposed to dispatch like seven of them there you go, Vinny. You like to play when you're skidding, huh? <laughs> well, it's time to remove the um, front feet. Um, the reason why I remove them last because um, sometimes I need them for a handle. And sometimes I don't, but what's the hurt of leaving it there and um, take, it, take it out later? Oh, there. Um, speaking of deer, um, there's there's actually a year that um, we did not harvest any um, deer. See what happened is um, the biologist, the um, TWPD um, biologist that come and um, inspect our ranch. Um, they actually recommended like four deer every 100 acres. Um, I thought that was freaking ridiculous. I thought that was a lot. So. <laughs> On that year I only dispatched like two of them and um, we have like um, 500 something acres here and out of 500 something acres I dispatched like two of them because um, I don't wanna you know I don't want to just harvest you know, I want to I wanna save the population but um, it's a bad idea they're overpopulated and um, some disease came in and in 2019 we actually lost like 80% um, of our deer population they have recovered but um, this year I probably um, gonna harvest like uh, maybe just a couple yes sir next time I'm gonna listen to the biologist they do this for a living you see right there I forgot to cut the um, meat on top of the neck so um, you don't want to use your salsa on on the meat it's um it's harder to cut uh, your best bet is to use your knife go around it as much as possible um, in this case right here um, I did like almost all of it and after you cut the um, 
meat with your knife then you can use the salsa and you will see here later um, after I cut the um, head of using the salsa um, it'll still be hanging in there because the esophagus um, will be um, holding the head and back to the knife and remove the head here we go There you go. After cutting the esophagus, you can remove the head. If you want to save the the head for um for a trophy, you know what I mean for a display, don't drop it. Yeah, well, uh, I plan to do a euro mount on the, on on this particular animal because um they're horn, they're they're naturally big. Now you um you see me like um <coughs> try try of um cutting the um webos out of the way right there and put it back it's um, his package so it's not on the way when um, we open up the belly um, to take out the guts when you um, open the belly um, initially um, you look for the um, bone between the um, between the legs and um, you, you start this whole thing with um, a small incision at this time I'm using um, a gut hook knife right there I'm showing the um, hook of the um, gut hook knife and remember when I say um, sometimes um, you may the um, you can accidentally breach the um, stomach it will happen right here and when that happens don't sweat it so much just rinse it it'll be fine I grew up around butcher so I know this thing happens now and then Well, after we cut the um, belly and um, you just yank it a little bit, the whole thing automatic comes down, automatically comes down. And um, at this point, um, you see me like I'm um, took out the heart. It's undamaged, which is good. And we're gonna take the liver. Um, I'm personally I don't like the liver, but um, my wife likes it, so um, I save it for her. I mean, I'm not going to gag, I can eat it, but, um, you know. Oh, by the way, when you're, um, when you're dropping the gut from the animal, there's a diaphragm that separates the, um, the guts, um, with the lungs and, um, heart like that. You have to, br you have to, like, cut that diaphragm, and after you do that, the whole thing just, um, falls, falls down. Right there. There's the liver. And put put it on the um, drumming box that's out there. Kidneys. <coughs> um, the kidneys are are good. I like the kidneys, so I might took him too. And after that, you just um, kind of clean it up. Uh, we got two kidneys, by the way. Sometimes you can grab both of them at the same time. Sometimes you can do it one at a time. It's pretty much done. Now, listen carefully. What I got to say is very, very important. Here we go. All right, folks, this is one of the things I like saving on a grass um, grazing animal. It's the tripes. It's like minudo, papaitan. This is what I call the Filipino gold. <laughs> yeah, but um, this is pretty good for papaitan. For those of you guys who, who like to eat it, um, you got to boil this, clean it further and all of that. But this is it. Save that. Now I got the liver, I got the heart. And I got a trips. I don't know how to clean the, um, the small intestine, so I didn't. I didn't save it. There you go. Looks like we're ready for the Papa Ethan. <laughs> well, 
Well, um, this is the end of the video. Um, we're not going to show um, the um, carcass being split in half because um, our camera um, was um, running out of battery. But um, after this, all we got to do is rinse it, cut it in half, and prepare it to be um, processed. Thank you for watching.